ipmnation.com. Hello to my friends here at ipmnation.com. As always, I want to jump over, say hello very quickly before we head to the live Facebook feed, and to thank you for making us the number one show here on ipmnation.com. I really, truly appreciate it. All right, here we go. Live on the wall video, fly on the wall video, I guess I wanted to say. Fly on the wall video here on Facebook. We're getting ready to go live. Live. From the Outpost Studios in Columbus, Ohio, you're listening to All Natural Being with Brian Brody. Brought to you by IPMNation.com. Get ready for the gong heard round the world. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Natural Being with Brian Brody is designed to shake your sense of self to the core. It's full contact psychology with an empowering twist, a philosophical loofah for your soul. For those of you not ready or comfortable releasing your inner superhuman, listener discretion is advised. Here's your host, Brian Brody. Good evening. You know, you think with episode, I think this is going to be episode 276, very special episode, our first ever in-studio guest. You'd think I know how to adjust this headset microphone, right? It's the simplest thing to do. It's like, probably just put it on your head, and then it's got ear things, and it just hooks on. But have you noticed any of the time? I'm almost like busy. We're getting ready to go. We're getting ready to queue it up. And like, what's wrong? Oh, Brian's headset isn't working right. Brian's head's not working right. The headset's probably fine. Well, in any event, good evening. And thank you for stopping by the number one rated show on IPMNation.com episode, as I said, episode 276 of the Gong Heard Round the World. You're in to All Natural Being broadcast as it happens here on IPMNation.com and Facebook for Fly on the Wall video, which is kind of fitting given the fly that's busy buzzing around in here. You might see him. He might make a cameo. Any event, we're coming live from the Outpost Studios in Columbus, Ohio, with rebroadcasts on iTunes and iHeartRadio. Greetings wherever you are, here in the Garden of the Mortals, top of the day, from the truest parts of your heart and your mind, because life, it's your labyrinth. Your shot at running the table begins right now. That's why we're always putting your heart's highest priority top of the list. That's why we're always placing your primal scream front and center in your life. We're never telling you to calm down. We're never to tell you to keep it to yourself. We're busy reinstalling and reinstating the true wisdom and wit of your inner whisper. Because we believe it's time to reboot your robust, to find your ferocious, to outbrutal the brutal that is the cut and shuffle that fate deals you on a daily basis, and to bring your own bold once and for all. But before we hit it this very special evening, hello to my friends here in the United States, Canada, Mexico, the UK, my good friends in Ecuador, China, the Philippines, Brazil, India, Australia, Germany, Italy, France, Turkey, Japan, Singapore, Sweden, Israel, South Africa, Puerto Rico, Kenya, the Netherlands, to those joining us from all over the globe. It's great to have you with us. And I am, we truly are, fired up to be driving your bandwagon, to be your biggest fan, to be avidly you, always avidly you. But let me ask you, Are you tired of being institutionalized by the intentions of others, convicted by the constructs of another, maybe an outdated construct of your own, remanded to a prison of rhetoric, yours or theirs? Me too. And that's why it's time. It's time to mortal up. So what do you say? Let's go kick in some doors. And before we hop over into the thread this evening, as I said, it's a very special, I'm going to tease it a little bit, I think, before we jump to it, but very special tonight, we have an in-studio guest, and this is going to blow you away, because most people, they'll say, right, they'll be like, oh, well, uh, uh, he or she is an in-studio guest. Where did they come from? Well, they came from across town, or they did this, or they did, you know, they, they managed to get here or there. 
Our in-studio guest tonight, like, traveled a pretty decent distance to get here. So we're very fired up uh, to have him here. And we'll be kind of highlighting who that is. You're not going to believe it. I don't even believe it still. I've been counting that. Well, I thought today was last week. Last week I was all excited. I was going, oh, wow, this is going to be great. He's going to be here. And then, uh, yeah, I was off by a week. Yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> Right? <laughs> what are you going to do? My mind doesn't work the way it always does. But before we get into that, hello this evening. Let's jump into the thread. Hello to Lisa. Thank you so very much. Is the fly your special guest? Oh, no. You know, fly is your special guest. That would be great. What, what was that actor's name? Uh, Lisa, what was that actor's name? Uh, oh, come on. He also played in Jurassic Park. To old Jeff Goldblum, the fly. No, the fly is not my special guest. <laughs> but thank you for the memory. I, I started an HBO movie one time. It wasn't so much starred. Jeff Goldblum was in it, and I was a bartender. So, you know, it looks like a credit. I got SAG credits for it, so I was in a, you'd think I could remember his name a little uh, better than I did. Candace, good evening. Thank you so much for the picture earlier. We are all waiting to hear how it went today with the pictures of the birds, and hopefully you can throw them up here in the thread. Janice, good evening. Thank you for joining us at All Natural Being. Ruth, thank you so much for joining us as well here at All Natural Being. It's nice to see your smile pop up. Jeff Goldblum, thank you, Janice. I appreciate that. In fact, it was. And this evening, we're going to talk about something a little different, right? Because one of the things that we we spoke of last evening, yes, you're absolutely right. I owe a share, right? Because I'm constantly pandering for shares here at the show. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you, Janice, very much. Uh, to our, it's almost like an old episode of Who's That? Or who, remember, uh, to our special guest this evening, uh, my sister Janice says, I remember uh, mom and me watching that movie and seeing you in it. Yeah, well, I, I was at the Gaslight Lounge in Hollywood. Yeah, I was a bartender. Jeff Goldblum walks in to buy like a stolen Peyton painting or something he was in, involved in, and I was busy wiping down, the, uh, wiping down the bar. But that's you would think I would remember Jeff Goldblum's name. All right. But what we're talking about this evening, it's a little bit of a continuation of last evening when we talked about just the little slivers, the little things that you and I can do to either keep ourselves in check or the little things we can do to put our heart's highest priority top of the list and what that will mean in our lives, right? What it will mean if you decide for one 70 second of your day, one 20 minute victory. What if you decide to be a little narcissistic? What if you decide to be a little selfish? What if you decide to be, here's one of my favorite words. People accuse me of being hedonistic. If you only knew. But before we get to any of that, <laughs> I want to go ahead and introduce my guest. And you're going to be like, you have got to be kidding me. But tonight in the studio, and one would have thought, see, I'm brand new at this. You would have thought I would have tested this mic before now, but I think we're good. I think we're good. Let me go ahead, and you're not even going to believe this. I'll flash this picture real quick. I, I think my heart is racing. I, I should have my pulse taken. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Henry Noel, who's been with us all kinds of times on the air from Ecuador, and he's all the way here. He's come all the way, as one would, right, if you're leaving South America. Why wouldn't you come to Columbus, Ohio? I don't know why you would, but he did, and we're thrilled to have him. Henry, thank you so very much for joining us here in the studio of All Natural Being. Live <laughs> from Cuenca, no. Well, that would be great, wouldn't it? We'll get there one day. You'll see. But ladies and gentlemen, it's Henry Noel. Yeah, Ruthie, I'm with you. I want to see the birds uh, as soon as we know what's going on with Candace. Candace, you'll have to let us know. Henry, thank you so very much. And I would say I got a smile on my face earlier. Um, uh, I got a smile on my face earlier. Ruthie says, hello, Henry. Ruthie, you should know Henry can't see the feet as I can, so I'll keep, uh, uh, I'll keep uh, telling him, everyone that says hello. Lisa says hello, hello Henry hi. as well. So if you want to say hi to Ruthie and to you Janice bet. and to Lisa. Hi. Hi, Ruthie. And hi, hi Lisa. How are you? <laughs> Janice. <laughs> so, so Henry's all the way here, and here's what we're going to discuss this evening. But first, I want to tell, would it be okay if I told him about a little bit of a conversation uh, that we had at dinner? Absolutely. Because it's all on me, right? <laughs> it's not like you concur. This is the part of the show where Henry will say, okay, well, the views expressed by Brian are pretty much, he's on his own, right? They're his views. So don't, whatever Brian says, it's not like I'm buying into it. So I get, I'm told from time to time, good evening, Stephen. Thank you for watching us here at All Natural Being. Janice says, oh, my God, Henry, great seeing you. <laughs> Hi, Janice. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> hello to Janice says hello. Lisa says hello, hello, Henry, as well. So 
from time to time, we'll be talking, and I should say we have another very uh, special studio guest uh, in this evening, just off camera, because I've only figured out how to do it on camera, but uh, Rita is here as well. So she's kind of like, like, like I have two very honored special guests here this evening inside the studio. So Rita is just off camera, but she's going to keep us. It's really like, I think, I think my pulse is racing, right? I do. It's like I have, right now I'm like, ooh, I'm even standing up straight, I think. <laughs> Henry and Rita here. Alan Black is here. Hello, Alan. Nice to see you. As always, thank you for joining us here at All Natural Being. And we were talking earlier today about how I get in trouble. Because sometimes I just don't think before I talk. So people will, you know, you'll be out and about in public or you go to school or you go someplace and you're, um, uh, someone will come up to you and say, oh, your kids are just so well behaved. How do you do it? They're so polite. They're so, and, and you know, this has happened for forever, for years for me. Your kids, they're so polite. They're so this. They're so that. How do you do it? What is it you do? How is it in this day and age you can get kids that are that way, they're that polite? And I say, oh, well, f- for whatever it's worth, well, I threaten to milk board them if they don't behave. And most times people will kind of go, oh, you mean like waterboard, but only with milk? Yes, that's what I mean. And they laugh and they go, oh, that's kind of funny. But every so often you'll get those people go, oh, that's not even funny. And I go, well, it is kind of funny because I usually, I start off with skim milk. I skim milk board them, right? I threaten 2%, right? Because I got to know who's boss. You got to know where to draw the line in the sand, right? (laughs) When you say these kind of jokes, Henry looks like Mr. Happy. Yes. (laughs) He's very well. I'm happy that he's here. I can tell you that for sure. So we were making that joke about, oh, how, how do you keep your kids in such great, you know, how do you keep them to teach them be so polite and this and that? And I skim skim milk, uh, uh, skim milk board them uh, whenever I get a chance, and that seems uh, to work. Good evening to John. Thank you for watching, as always, brother. I appreciate having you here. Good evening to Sarah. Sarah, please say hello to everyone for us. I hope everything's uh, going great. Thank you so very much for joining us here at All Natural Bank. All right, so Henry, yeah. here's the scoop. We're talking this evening, uh, not about milk boarding, right? We're talking this evening about what does it finally take so that when everyone and their brother seems to be betting against you, when everyone and their brother seems to be just, they've decided that you should live life your own way, Right? Or, or I guess you should say you should live life their way, not so much living it your way. Well, how? What do we do to well, be able to stand to that and go, nah, I think I'm going to follow my own heart? Well, avoid the half and half. That, that's, <laughs> you know, okay, let's, let's stay, let's stay away. Well, that's, stay. That would be an expensive budget. If you're going to milk somebody, milk board somebody with half and half, that yeah. just adds up. Yeah. I, cause I, I think they sell half and half only like in the little pint size things, right? (laughs) Now I go for 2% milk. I go, don't make me get the whole milk out. I'm not messing around. Don't make me. (laughs) (laughs) But I swear, people look at me and go, oh, that's not funny, Brian. Oh, it's hysterically (laughs) funny. (laughs) I threaten to milk board them. It's hysterically funny. (laughs) All right, brother. I'm sorry. So what do we got to do so that in the darkest hour, if you will, Mm -hmm. where everyone seems to be gunning against you, what do we got to do to be able to finally get to that point where you go, yeah, I'm just not going to listen anymore. Well, just take life as it's supposed to be lived. Um, we, 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 we are so stressed and so pushed into the dark corners of of the of what we call reality, and the problem with it is, is it's that's not the way life was supposed to be lived. Uh, live it, live it, laughing, live it, having fun. Um, don't take all of this so serious. I mean, you look about the length of time that we are here on this planet. Why would we want to be so bloody serious? It's it's almost sad. Uh, we have had all of these life events, you know, pushed on us, imposed on us. Or the way that we live our lives has we we've been taught uh, nose to the grindstone, work yourself to debt, into sure. debt, just so you can try to work yourself out of debt. Um, get the 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 heavy education and start off with a half a million dollars worth of debt. Um, and we willingly do this because we believed all the hype, everything that we've been taught, everything that we've been that's been pushed on us as as gospel. And we simply have to. It's it's uh, it, life's not a joke. 
Sure. But we need to start laughing at it because it really is. We're taking it way too serious. Have a little more fun with it for sure. Absolutely. Right? And not always be drawn into other people's vote. When I talk about the mashugana of the marketplace, when I talk about the status quo, when I talk about some of these other things, and you're like, okay, well, wait a minute. Why is it that I should subjugate myself? Why should I be a marionette? Why should I be a sock puppet that someone else gets to dictate how I lead my life. And I think you're right. I think it's indoctrination. I think it's, we, we just grow up learning to always be checking outside for a thumbs up or a thumbs down, right? Mm-hmm. What do they say that a, a human baby is able to tell just based on the mother's look, the mother's facial expressions and everything else? They're able to read all that nonverbal communication. Yes. Blind is shaking his head. Yes. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> right. All that nonverbal communication. Then we just stick with that as we get older and we'll do anything to get a smile and nothing to be ridiculed by another person. So we, we tend to bring it on ourselves, don't we? We do. We, we are fighting and fighting for the attention. Whether it's negative or positive, it doesn't matter just as long as we get the attention. And I think that that's really the issue. Um, really bring it together. Understand that we are here for such a short period of time. Um, enjoy it. Have fun with it. It's it's far less stressful than, than we really believe it is if we can simply just stop doing the things that create all the stress for us. And, man, stop taking on everybody else's stresses. We don't, we don't need to do that. And I, I will tell you, just to share a little bit of a personal story, that now that having fully been gripped by this concept of recovering from the three brain surgeries, I see a lot of people, Henry, out at the stores. I see a lot of people that that aren't doing as well as I am. It's obvious that they've had brain surgery. They're in a wheelchair, they're in a walker, they can't talk, they can't walk, they have a hard time articulating. So for me, it's easy to go, how could you not look at life and just be absolutely thrilled to be here? How could you not go there but for the grace of God, there but for the grace of the universe, whatever it is, however you define your divine, however you define your divine. Thank you, sir, very much. Thank you, brother. (laughs) Hell is, you know, how is it that you get to the point where, as I look at it, it's like I've got nothing to be upset about. I absolutely uh, could uh, be somewhere else other than here right now. But the fact that I'm here right now is something to be grateful for. It's something to have a sense of gratitude about. Is, maybe, maybe is that it, just cultivating the gratitude when I tell everyone to go be you? Are we talking about cultivating the gratitude for who you ultimately are? We... Yeah, we're cu- not only cultivating that. I think it's it's making the realization that we're not responsible any longer for what's gone on in the past. Stop being feeling guilt. Stop put, beating yourself up for what happened in the past. For people that we've lost, for people that we've hurt feelings on, it's done. It's over. It's it's you move on, assimilate it, and and live your life. As far as tomorrow's concerned, uh, you got to live today like it's your last day. Because we don't know if we have tomorrow. We may have 120 tomorrows, a year's right. worth of tomorrows. Right. But we don't know that. So why, why, why not live this moment as if it was our last? And if we get another one, live that one as it's, as it's our last uh, with, with just the love and the feelings that you really want to have rather than what we think someone wants us to be. And you, when you talk about that thinking of what someone wants us to be, I oftentimes think of, of plagiarism, where you steal someone else's words, let's say. And although I have a different opinion of plagiarism than most, right, because I say all the stuff I write, you're welcome to, just, right? Because people say, oh, well, Brian, you wrote that. Nah, somewhere in the 10,000 books that I have here in the library, somewhere someone else said something very similar and I changed the conjugation of a verb or I changed the now this and that and, and, and now, oh, it's mine, right? And go, e- 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 yeah, no. What is it, the whole comment about the, shol- uh, the, on, the sol- on the shoulders of giants? Sarah says you should know, Henry, nice putting a face with a voice <laughs> and name. Thank you, Sarah. I really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I keep trying to catch, uh, talk him into coming up for one of our family reunions, Sarah. So I'll let you know how that's uh, uh, how that's going as well. But that ultimately, when we talk about what we need to do, is not plagiarize another person's opinion, right? Because when you say, "Well, this other person wants me to do A or B or C or D," if you dovetail with that, it's a plagiarism. You're plagiarizing 
their interpretation of how your heart should beat, what your passion should be, what your potential is all about. Exactly. What do you think? No, exactly. And, and you have to also remember that if someone else is trying to get you to live their life for them, they don't have the guts to do it themselves. So why should you be doing that? Uh, live your own life. Have fun with it. Uh, it is so, it's way too short uh, to be dealing with all of this Meshuggah. As Meshuggah. To, to, oh, I love you, that term. It's a good word. I love that term. <laughs> and I have to tell you, ever since Lisa asked me in the beginning of the show, is that fly flying around who your special guest is? I don't see it anymore. I think I've heard it a couple times buzzing around, but I, I don't see it. So then let me ask you this, Henry. In addition to you saying, okay, well, you're just not going to tolerate it more. You're not going to put up with it anymore. Why do we surround ourselves with those people, right? Like all the time you hear say, well, you got to cut that person out of your life. And I've made the joke before when I'm not doing the waterboarding jokes, uh, the milkboarding jokes. I've made the, uh, the joke before that nothing gives off the light like the fire of a burning bridge. Mm-hmm. Right? It just, it's a great way to watch where you're stepping. But, but why do we hold on to the, to the negative? Why are those people still satellites of ours? What, what's it going to take for us to get to a point where we say, nah, you know what? I'm pretty much not going to allow them to control me like that. Is it a fear of losing them, a fear of gaining ourselves? Is it a combination of the two? Do we fear that, you know, maybe we're never going to have them again, or maybe we're afraid of what will ultimately become if we don't have that rodeo clown or that safety net? I'm not calling your, anyone in your life a clown, not a rodeo clown, but you know what I mean? Is it, are we afraid? Is it a combination of the two? I think it's our, our fear. I think it's a fear of loss on our part, and I think it's a fear of hurting people's feelings. I think it's a fear. These are all our fears. Sure. I mean somebody you know, that we deal with day in, day out and decide at some point that we just don't like the negativity anymore, and so we simply just don't want to be around them anymore. It doesn't mean you cut them from your life. It's just simply control the amount of time you spend with them and talk to them. I mean, uh, we've had to do that off and on throughout our, our, our time down in Ecuador. We started off with a, a group of friends, and gradually that group of friends seems to wane off, and, and other groups of friends come in or, or acquaintances, and that changes. It changes almost on a daily basis depending on you. It's what you want, what you feel. It, we haven't burnt any bridges. We just, we just don't seem to show up to the same events anymore because of things have changed. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's the thing. Nobody said you have to be friends with everybody in the world. That's not the case. And if somebody that brings you down, you just don't spend that much more time with them. Um, you just control the length of time you, we, we have to deal with them. I mean, we wrap ourselves up in everybody else's unhappiness. So I guess you could say then that, that as we move through the day, our agenda is our attitude. And if you watch our attitude and you say, well, you know, I'm not saying adios, I'm not saying goodbye, I'm not saying I'm cutting you out of my life, right? Don't listen to me about the jokes about burning bridges, right? All the rest of it. But what we can say is that, no, my agenda is watching out for my attitude, where I am in any particular moment. Is this something that makes me smile? Is this something that makes me sad? What is it that I have to do in order to be able to put my heart's highest priority top of my list without fear? Fear of ridicule, of, of, uh, of uh, I said, riddled with rhetoric. I call it drive-by rhetoric, right? Where even on, 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 in social media now, everyone's afraid that someone, complete strangers, complete strangers could have something negative to say about you, and you let that derail your day. But if you decide that your attitude, that, that, that the adventure at hand is what matters to you, makes it pretty easy to turn down the volume of what other people have to say. Absolutely does, because you are, in essence, control in control of your own life. I know we don't feel like it sometimes, but we really are, and we are in control of those who affect our lives. Sure. And the moment you really use that, the moment you really take control of that, be- makes that become part of your mantra, then no matter what anybody else does, it doesn't really affect you at all because it's of no consequence. Well, I say all the time that, especially now it's become popular in the media to talk about um, inappropriate speech. Or if someone will say, well, that's just, you know, inappropriate vernacular. 
whatever happened to this concept of inappropriate hearing? How is it that what I say affects your hearing? And people want to be outraged. It's, it's like that's what everyone wants to do now, the new, the new rage. All the rage is to be outraged, is to be offended. Good golly, just, I know you don't watch the news. You watch the news anymore as much as I do, but I'm told you look at the news of late. Everyone's going crazy mm-hmm. over what? You know, and I really can't figure that out. It, it's, it's amazing. We, I mean, there was a time when we watched news to actually learn what was going on around us. (laughs) And that was a time when we actually had investigative reporters that reported the news, didn't give us their opinions, simply just gave us the news. Now we deal with a bunch of celebrities who regurgitate exactly what they're being told through their earpieces with no regard to whether it's true or not. And then they don us with their opinions. And, uh, you know, that's just not the right way to go. We're surrounded by wannabes. For, for lack of a better word, these people are just not what they're supposed to be doing, and they're dressed up like news reporters, but we fall for the disguise, and, and that's the problem. I mean, it's like sitting there and listening to a ventriloquist show. Sure. And you get upset at the ventriloquist, so you go up there and you yell at the dummy. Right. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I can't quite figure that out. You know, Alan uh, says, and I think he's mentioned this once before, and I love it, but he calls it, he calls it the liberty of discerning. Alan, thank you very much for that, because I absolutely think that's it. It's, it's how you discern, right? It's People can imply all they want, but it's your inference of that implication that you decide in any given moment, does that derail your day? Does that ruin your sense of self? Exactly. Right? So it's not necessarily about inappropriate language. It's about inappropriate hearing. Don't hear any of the critics spew, right? Don't hear those things that if you find those things hurtful, Just turn the volume down. Like earlier when we were sitting here in the studio, until I turned up the volume on the headset, you couldn't hear what was happening through the show. It doesn't mean that I wasn't saying the words. I was still saying the words. You could see my lips move, but I was able to turn the volume down and you couldn't hear me. So why can't we learn to turn the volume down? Well, we've got someone, right? If we can learn to take it in and let it ruin our day, why can't we learn just to put the deadbolt on, (laughs) right? Yep. Turn the volume down and not let it in. And we sure can. That is, uh, you know, that's the control we all have. We don't have to listen for one, what people want to say condescendingly or, or that. And at the same time, we don't have to let what they say bother us. That's our choice. I mean, we can point our fingers at them. We can say sure. it's their fault. They shouldn't sure. have said this. They shouldn't have said that. But every time you point your finger, think about your hand shape. You have three fingers pointing back, back at yourself, right. and that's the one who's responsible for this. Us, right. we are, because we take this stuff so personal, and there's and life is too short for this. And you know, uh, Ruthie said something a little bit ago, and I, and I want to make sure that I didn't brush over it. And she says that well, moms and babies cuddle a lot. I really recommend cuddling, and I think that maybe what happens. In a different kind of way, let me also say hello to Zoe. Zoe, thank you so very much for joining us here at All Natural Being. Maybe we're all just looking to go back to the day where we get to cuddle, and we think that it's attractive to be outraged. It's attractive to be a victim. It's attractive, right, to to be offended. So we have other people feel, oh, I'm sorry you're a victim. I'm sorry you're offended. I'm sorry you have inauthentic hearing. Or, or you know what I mean? Uh, I'm sorry. And maybe, Ruthie's got a great point, maybe everyone's just looking to be cuddled or coddled, maybe. Maybe as we grow up and we get out of that, maybe we're looking to be coddled. And, and for some of us, the best way that that can happen is to feel like we're always victimized and waiting for someone to ride in on the white horse and save us from our own victimization. Mm-hmm. And that's our job. Our job is to save ourselves. And... I, I love the I love the concept of, of the the cuddling and the coddling. Sure. To me, that is what it's about. I mean, that's what shows the true affection, the true emotions. Sure. That's really what it's all about. And you know, instead of wanting sympathy and wanting to, to feel sorry for yourself, then, then it's it's always present compassion. And I don't accept sympathy from anybody. I want compassion. If I have questions or I have doubt or I I really don't understand what's going on at any given time. I want compassion. I want someone to try to help me through those moments 
not to get me through the moment, but to get me through any future moment within the same circumstance. You know, the old story of teaching, you know, Jesus teaching the person how to fish. You know, you can give them a fish, you know, give me sympathy for one day, for one moment. You're going to have to come back and feed me again tomorrow. Sure. But give me compassion. You just taught me how to fish. I can sustain myself. I don't have to have to rely on you to do that. And I'm wondering if the boomerang side of that is also true, Henry, that when we get people in our immediate circle to see that we've put our heart's highest priority top of the list and the universe didn't explode, didn't trigger a singularity, there's not a black hole that's, you know, gobbling everyone up. We kind of give people permission to go, well, they seem pretty happy. They seem to be smiling all the time. They seem to withstand the threats of being milk boarded, right? They, everything seems to be going pretty good in their lives. Don't we give other people permission to, to be able to feel what we feel by being grateful and by smiling and having a life that we're just thrilled with? Why not, why not create the world that you want to live in sure. through your actions? You want the world to be happy? Well, then smile. Right. You know don't dwell on all of the stuff that's sadness. Uh, you want the world to be respectful, then be respectful. It starts with one of us. Just one of us starts doing that, and it is extremely contagious. And when someone wants to ridicule you and they want to bat, you know, really beat you down, and when you real show them that it doesn't matter, it, you didn't affect me, I'm still smiling, I'm still having a good time, and I'm just going to enjoy this in spite of what you had to say. I'm just going to go move on. They don't do it anymore. Or they'll find someone else to do that. So put them in a room of 100 people that are sitting there smiling at them. Sure. All of a sudden, all of that criticisms and all of that negativism has no place. Has no place. Well, I, and again, it goes back to your agenda or your attitude is your agenda. If you can, if, if you can dictate your particular attitude in any given moment, if you come to it in a sense of feeling gratitude, if you come to it from, from a sense of feeling special— if you come to it, and maybe this is it, Henry, too, if you come to it feeling that you're worthy to be cuddled with. I think Ruthie's really on to something mm -hmm. when she talks about, right, when we talk about what we learn as babies, this whole sense of cuddling. I'm beginning to think that people that want to be outraged all the time, they, I, I know this sounds strange, right? And people are going to say, oh, right, Bryce, so if someone wants to fight, you're going to go give them a hug. I know that sounds mm -hmm. kind of trite, right, kind of glib, but... But maybe there, maybe she's on to something. Maybe it's that sense of connection with another human being. And maybe maybe the default position is, well, I like misery, and maybe I can get a cuddle based on my projection of a misery. What do you think? Well, yeah, I think you need to put that steel chair away um, <laughs> <laughs> for another, another occasion. Uh, yeah, we, we don't. You know, there, there are moments. There are moments when, when yeah, you require the sterile chair. Yes, I, there's sure. no question about it. Um, but I think for the majority of the time, for most, most of the instances, it's really not what is said or what's directed. It's what the reaction is. The reaction, sure. So long as we can control the reaction, then we learn to change our perceptions of what, what we heard. And Henry John is saying in the thread, something wonderful is happening. And, I, and if you take that attitude that no matter what goes down, something wonderful is happening, something wonderful is unfolding right now, we may not have the presence or we may not have the acuity to get to see it in this moment. And I should tell everyone uh, two things quickly. Don't forget, you can call us toll free, 833-462-3698, 833-GO-BU. Also, I should make mention, since you said the folding chair, um, we, we were joking the other day about it. Whenever Henry and I get a chance to talk, where uh, um, Henry's normally a little more kumbaya than I am. M my default mode is just a little more kick-ass than I think most people realize. And Henry's <laughs> is a good bit more kumbaya. And I said to him the other day, Ruthie says, don't worry, be happy. Ah, yes, Ruthie, it. thank you very much. Henry says he <laughs> loves it. Thank you very much. I said to Henry the other day, I just found out, uh, or, or when I found out that I wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer, well, I just decided to be the ice pick. And so, so when we make the reference of the metal chair, it's just because we've joked before about, you ever been out somewhere? <laughs> just, you know, you get that urge to just grab one of those folding metal chairs and go, all right, let's just do this. Let's, come on. 
one of the two of us needs put out of my misery. Right? One of the two of us. <laughs> right? Let's just grab these. You know, we're having a duel with folding metal chairs. But, uh, you know, so, so when he says folding metal chair, uh, that's what he's talking about. All right. So, Henry, let me go ahead and make the announcement of the number one more time. 833-GO-BU. 833. That's 4623968. And call in. Give call us a call. In. Yeah, yeah, I'd call love to. You know, because if you call, you just like right, like one of those old time television operators. If you call before midnight tonight, <laughs> um, but if you call, <laughs> you'll be the first ever call into the All Natural Being Studio when there are live studio guests, mm-hmm. and you get to talk to them. You just have to talk to me. So like, well, I'd call, but. I have to talk to Brian if I call. Well, here's the thing. I'll make it now. Here, let me look at this camera. Here's my word. <laughs> you call me, and uh, uh, you call into the show, and I'll let you talk to Henry. How's that for a deal? I've also realized that gives off a little bit of red light right <laughs> there, doesn't it? Holy smokes, that's got to go away. <laughs> right. Let me try that one more time. So, yeah, so 833, that's eh, a little better, I think. I think I got a little sun today, though. I don't yeah, know. I think you did. <laughs> um, so give us a call, 833-462-3968, and you can be the first person to call in in our new format. format you can be the first person to call in and actually speak to our very first studio guest. So that would be great. Brian Bouchard, good evening, sir. Hope all is well. Thank you so very much for joining us here at All Natural Being. We're talking about what it takes to be able to ignore your critics, right? Just to kick them to the curb. And we have in the studio all the way from Ecuador. Thank you so much, Henry. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Henry Noel is with us. Rita is here as well. Thank you for making uh, the journey and hanging out with us this evening in the studio. Don't forget, give us a call, 833-462-3968. So, Henry, what else can we do? I know you're working on a lot of the writing. You're working on the audio. Um, you've got a lot in terms of your own website. And I know now that you're, you're freelance writing and you have all these articles and the, appearing in magazines and newspapers and this and that. So I, I really appreciate you taking the time to come and hang out with me for uh, a little while. But then also, what is it specifically that you and I can work on? What is it specifically we can tell other people to work on so that they're not afraid of putting their heart's highest priority on top of the list? They're not afraid of the primal scream. People say to me all the time, oh, well, I couldn't do the primal scream. What would everyone say? Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's the problem is we, we are so concerned about our appearance. We're so concerned about how we sound we're so concerned about what people think we're we're so concerned about everything um you know i mean i can sit here and be concerned about i keep not looking at the camera um that's but it's just simply not the thing we are the most important people in our lives when you look in the mirror that's the person that you walk around with every moment of every day of your life and if you can't bring yourself to loving that person then you need to find a way to bring yourself to loving that person. Well, because then again, too, I think if you can't do that, you're never going to find someone. How do you know you'll ever be in the position for someone to love you? Exactly. Good evening. Thank you for calling All Natural Being. Who's this? This is Candace Johnson. Hi, Candace. Hey, Candace, how are you? Hi, Henry. Hi, <laughs> Brian. How are you? Good. Uh I just wanted to tell Henry he had the kindest face. <laughs> <laughs> but if anybody can call in, if I can do it, anybody can. <laughs> Thank you, Candace. I so appreciate okay, well, that. Well, Candace, let me tell you, there's this not much of, uh, you know, when they say you can't judge a book by the cover, you can judge uh-huh. the book of Henry Noel by the cover because he is as nice and gracious as his smile. Oh, yeah. uh, it's he's just, it's just uh, a great guy. But also, I want to brag about you a little bit, Candace. A lot of people texted me last night and said, you did a great job. You were a rock star. Well, I don't know what you oh, were nervous man, about. I was a nervous wreck. I'm uh, a little bit calmer today. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt bad because I saw you uh, exchanging uh, some notes in the thread here with Ruthie. She wanted to see the picture. But to be honest with you, Candace, you know me. I'm not the, remember, the, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I'm just the ice pick. Yeah, I don't so know how to do I don't that. know how to get a picture up <laughs> in the thread. Yeah, I mean. Uh, I caught the one bird today. I okay. had to run a lot today, so I didn't get to spend a lot of time in the backyard. But And he 
was taking off flying, so I got him real quick. Like <laughs> there you go. Well, Ruthie, what I'll do is I've got I've got the picture uh, that Candace is referring to. So if it's cool with you, I'll just message you because I I don't know how to add a picture in the thread. My luck, you know, to be honest with you, Candace, my luck, I'd go to add a picture. And it'd be like a power outage. It would shut down. And everyone yeah. would go, Bri, didn't you know adding a picture during a Facebook thread meant that there would yeah, be a power it's outage? It's a really strange thing. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why, but they're always here. <laughs> uh, I don't know why. Well, but, it's and, uh, and I know for you, it's the red birds. And for Henry, it's the tree frogs. Yeah. yeah yes. There's something else. In, in, wow. Yeah. I like that. So I think it's good energy. I th- I think that nature yeah. can tell. That's what we talked about last night in the spectrum, Candace. There's, there's got to be something that nature can sense when you're smiling and you're in a good mood. You're not going to take, you know, crap weasel Wednesdays. Uh, it's just right. Thursday, so you're not going to take any crap today because crap weasel Wednesdays is all next week already. You're not going to take anything right. from anybody. And you're welcome, Ruthie. You're absolutely welcome. Uh, and I think nature can sense that. That's maybe why the tree frogs are going nuts uh, for Henry and the red birds are going crazy for you, Candace. That's my... That's... I don't know. I mean, they'll sit on the ground and actually just look at me or get on my patio and try to look in. And it's real hard to grab your phone real quick and get a picture of them without them, you know, like the one I took when I came in today. He was flying off, so... Well, I'll tell you, the moral of the story is everyone thought you did a great job last night. And, Candace, no well, matter what happens. I don't even remember what I said. Oh, I was you were great. No. <laughs> and let me also say, Candace, you're the first ever caller yep. in to All Natural Being when there's a live studio guest. Absolutely. So for the rest of my life, and <laughs> let's be honest, who knows how long that's going to be. <laughs> for the rest of my life, I'll have that, Candace, right? You called in right. while Henry and Rita were here in the studio. So it's great. So thank you so very much. I super appreciate it. Um, okay. I just wanted to say one thing to sure. Henry when sure. we were talking about people and the negativity and stuff. Sure. Mm-hmm. Please go ahead. Um, Henry, there's a lot of people in my life I dearly love that they just want to – they're just – the way that they think and they're just want to argue all the time. I don't care if it's about politics or this, that, or the other. Mm-hmm. And I had to distance myself from them all because they just kind of, that's all they want to do yeah. is argue about things we can't really do anything <laughs> about. Yes. That I tend to just kind of ignore it. Uh, let it go, let it roll off my back, smile at them, don't answer, whatever, <laughs> whatever you think is fine with me, you know. Exactly. And I've just had to develop that attitude, and I don't get mad. I just let it go. I'm proud of you. You, you know, you're the first person now to, to actually say that that's exactly what you've taken control of yourself, your life, your emotions, and you really would rather run with those emotions you create rather than somebody else does for you. So I am extremely proud of you. Step one, you're doing it, and I'm proud of you. And Candace, as I said earlier, no plagiarism for you, right? You're not plagiarizing someone else, plagiarizing someone else's thoughts no, and borrowing those thoughts no. in your life. So good I'm for you. I'm talking about things that I've been through my life. Sure. You know, things and how it... I, Years ago, I saw a doctor on TV talking about how a person's personality is not totally formed till they're like 30 years old. Well, I found that not to be true. (laughs) (laughs) From 30 to now, I have went through a lot of transitions in my life. It took me a long time to figure out uh, what's good for me and what I feel in my heart, my soul, what's right, what's wrong, and how to deal with it. See, I call that being honest. I call that being honest. And you're right. We We never stop. We never stop changing. Change is the biggest consistency we have in the world is our changing. And so long as you're willing to keep changing and the more you're willing to really take a good look and assessment of yourself and say, well, I like this and I don't like this, and you're willing to change it, you're growing, that's being an adult. That's really being human. I think I still have more room to grow, more things to work on, 
you know, constantly. Sure. But hopefully I keep getting better, hopefully. Well, Candace, I'm absolutely yeah. confident you'll keep getting better. And, and Henry and I were talking about this this evening uh, over dinner before the show, is that, that there, everyone wants to talk about human nature. And I'm guilty of it, too, Henry, right? Mm-hmm. I'm talking about human nature. But, Candace, yeah. what if our human nature is just constant growth? What if human nature is just dynamic? There's nothing static about it. So what if you and I are continued? You said earlier, oh, well, you know, the, your personality, is it by the time you're 30? Well, well I sure would like my personality to catch up with me. Your is completely formed yeah. by the time you're 30. Yeah. I don't believe that. Yeah, no, I don't believe it. I don't believe uh, it at all. The changes I've went through since I was 30 years old. Oh, same. I? Same here. So yeah. I think it's a function of realizing that we're just dynamic, right? Uh-huh. And we're just, that everything's changing. You know, even if we were to get into a conversation to uh, your skin cells replace themselves, your, the cells in your hair, the cells in your liver, the cell, you know, the human body is constantly changing. Uh-huh. I think, Candace, maybe for Henry and for Rita and for you and for me, we can be kind of grateful that we're not a statue, we can kind of be grateful that we're constantly evolving. And, and people go, oh, you can't use the word evolving because some people that don't like evolution, they'll say you can't. But we're constantly growing, right, Candace? would you say? Yeah. Um, I feel like I am for the better. Great. And it took me a long time to figure out how to get rid of the negativity Uh and the controlling type things, trying, uh-huh. you know, to break the chains away from all that. And uh, um, I'm a happy person, and I hope that I'll continue to get to be happier. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to tell Henry he looks so kind. <laughs> and, Thank um, you. Uh, I just wanted to call in and tell him hello. Great. Well, thank, thank you, you so much, uh, Henry. I'll let you. I'll let you uh, take it from it, and then uh, we'll get ready to run. But Candace, thank you so much for last night, and All right. uh, and thank you again for calling this evening. And thank you, Candace. I really okay. appreciate that. Uh, that's very sweet. Okay. Thank talk you. To you all later. All you right, my it. friend. Thanks so much, Candace. Okay. Bye now. You know, she raises a very valid point, Henry, is mm-hmm. that maybe we get disappointed in ourselves because. We don't realize we're dynamic. Maybe we get disappointed in ourselves because we, we think that the static sense of who we are, that this is who I am, this is, you know, this is my personality, this is my core, and maybe because it's just a lie. It is. Everything in the universe is in a constant. You know, you just look at the earth and go, well, you know, at least I got the ground. I know the ground is stable. No, it's spinning around at thousands of miles of an hour, and that orbit is spinning around. <laughs> so there's nothing no. static in the universe. So maybe a part of everyone being disappointed, everyone being upset, is that intuitively we know we're living a lie. Here what do you is. think? I absolutely agree. That's really what it is. We know we are. We know we're living a lie. It's just we. It's hard for us to admit the fact that we are because we have been so taught sure. all of the reality of the right. lie. And so we we have to go against our, everything we believe in, everything sure. our parents taught us, every, we have to go against all of that in order to admit that we live in a state of flux, that everything is constantly changing. And to do that means, you know, we see that as some everybody's been wrong. Sure. Well, it, it doesn't mean that they've been wrong. It means that they just didn't have the knowledge to sure. pass on the correct thing. Uh, bottom line, even if it is that they're all wrong. Right. Well, then maybe it's time we start doing things right. You know, wisdom is defined as, as having knowledge and using it. Mm-hmm. And foolishness is having knowledge and not using it. Your choice. We can be wise, realize we need to make some changes in the way we've been taught, or we can be extremely foolish and just continue down the way we're doing it. So it's all up to us. And then ultimately you have to look back. And, and as you said before, we talked about compassion. You look back, it, it wasn't necessarily that our teachers were, you know, were evil or they were anything. It's just uh, science is one big log book mm-hmm. of how wrong we were three days ago. Exactly. Think of anything in science and you go, oh, crap, 
72 hours ago, we didn't believe any of that, right? We, you look at all the scientific studies. I mean, that's why I, I say from time to time, wasn't it, wasn't it, I read the story that George Washington was a victim of a homicide. They bled him to death by covering him in leeches. Mm -hmm. Now, none of his doctors were charged because they thought that was the reality. They thought that was real. They thought that was true. That stuff was worked. And they bled the poor boy. That's it. Right? So maybe it's not so much a function of, you know, we don't have to hold a grudge against anyone. Maybe. Now, in some cases, maybe your parents were just not nice people. Maybe so. Maybe your caregivers weren't really nice people. Maybe so. Don't know. But ultimately, there could very well be some people in the camp that they did everything they could with the knowledge they had at the time. I saw an article the other day, and I wish I could remember it. Maybe, Henry, will you stick around? Can we do one, another one tomorrow night? Of course. Go with you. All right, maybe we'll talk about this tomorrow night. I know I saw an article that said 90% of the people polled that could recall their first memory, mm -hmm. It was made up. Mm -hmm. The first, th their first memory wasn't even real. They, they go, oh, yeah, I remember when I was, and they go, no, it isn't real. That, that's, that's not what, how it really happened. So I read that article, and I'll get it for tomorrow night on our show, and I read that article and thought, well, if it's true that some of my first memories were fallacies, mm -hmm. I'm deciding right now that I had a rock and roll youth. My parents were great. Mm -hmm. I did everything, right? It was just a utopia, right? That's when I learned about ambrosia. That's when I learned about raspberry sorbet, right? Which is like my childhood was just a rock and roll show. That's it. Well, why can't I think that? You can, and there's no reason not to. I mean, there are facts, obviously. There are some things that are factual, and but... You know, the, the bottom line of the whole thing is it's perception. It's oh. what did – what were we perceiving at the time? What was our mental state? What was our physical state? What was our spiritual state at the time we were perceiving everything? Okay, so let me ask you this then if I could interrupt. Sure. We say it's a fact. There were, you said there are facts. Well, if I perceive it differently, mm -hmm. is it still a fact? No. It's not a fact to me. No. Well, I, I could have been abused. I could have been tortured. I could have been any of these other things. But if I represent in my mind, right? Now, I know people go, oh, well, but uh, the subconscious, if we put you in a trance, you'll remember this and that. But, but don't I get to pick my facts, if, uh, right? And if I want to choose to believe that, all right, everything I've always thought about my childhood Mm -hmm. Now they're telling me that that my first thoughts are wrong. Then you know what? I was born into a family where my parents were just rock stars. I, I didn't want for anything. I just had a freaking riot every day. Superhero jumping off the furniture. Oh, my parents. I was allowed to climb on the couch uh, with shoes on my feet. I was allowed to eat Tootsie Rolls whenever I wanted. I mean, it, right? You say, oh, well, there's still the facts. Is it a fact if I don't represent it to myself as a fact? Why do I have to be why do I have to be remanded to someone else's definition of what a fact was in my life? Maybe I did have a blast in my childhood. Well, it's your perception and therefore you get to dictate what is fact to you. Um all we can do is is realize or at least attempt to understand that the perceptions that we have have been taught to us. They, sure. we, it's all from the data that we have received, and that's our perceptions. Does that make us all wrong? No. Does it make us all right? No. It's, it's perception. And we have to base our whole lives on these perceptions. So we really have to look at what is the validity of the perceptions that we really have. Are they based on fact or are they based on fiction? But we have to decide that for ourselves. And you're right. You, you know, you can... You can perceive your life as having been the greatest life in the world. That's your what I've son, decided. Son to children to, of, the, of kings, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what I've decided from now on. How was your childhood? It was a rock and roll show. There you go. Right? It, it, I, I listened to nothing but George Thorogood the whole time. Right? It, it, it was just a blast. Well, I can't. If, if the memories I have as a childhood, they're pretty certain now that I may not be recalling it correctly then I choose to recall it any way I want, right? Well, I had a blast mm -hmm. as a child. I wasn't, 
You know, I didn't have that little go around, that little slap and tickle with the priest. You know, I didn't come from a, 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 a you know, a, 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 I didn't have a tough bringing and an upbringing, an alcoholic family, all this other than that. Why can't I just decide that the fact is that as I represented to myself was, yeah, my dad loved the party. Yeah, I had to go to bed early a couple of times. Yeah. Well, I'll never set foot in a Catholic church again. But you know what I mean? It's like, why can't I just go, yeah, <laughs> everything turned out good. I'm still alive, right? I'm cr- I, and, and, and in this, people say, well, Brian, you can't create your own facts. Oh, oh, wait, then I want to be a politician. <laughs> yeah. They, have, they make a job, right? I'll create my own facts anytime I want. And if, if it's ultimately what makes you happy, why can't we create in our mind's eye what our youth was like? Right. I don't have an argument for that because you're absolutely right because it's your perceptions. It's your what, – what you want to see how your life was. Um, there's, I don't see anything that there's wrong with that. If it makes you happy, that's great. Uh, you know, we all have to take a look at us and ourselves, each of us, have to really take a good look in the mirror and decide what it is about our lives that we fear so much about change. Sure. What it is that we really want to see us do and accomplish today. Right. And we have to stop worrying about what went on yesterday because it's done. And, right. and all we can do is learn from that. Knowledge is the process of learning. And we, so long as we can use the past as, as a guidelines for how we have grown up, answers the questions that we have about ourselves, why we fear, why mm-hmm. we hate. Mm-hmm. And once you can realize and understand that this, everything was taught to you, sure. then you can unlearn it. And change sure. all of those aspects if you so choose. You don't have to. It's your perceptions. It's your life. You do what you want to do with it. Uh, it's just that no matter what you choose, you have nobody else to blame right? but yourself. All right. I think what we'll do is we'll probably end on that note. John says we're doing it now, following the static quo. Well, that I absolutely agree with, absolutely right? The static quo. Right. That's, that's why I use that term, John, whenever we can. Thank you very much for that. All right, Henry, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. But if it's cool with you, how about tomorrow night? It's Friday night. We'll be back at 8 p.m. Absolutely. Uh, if that's good. So we can do the show then. But thank you so very much for coming here, hanging out. My pleasure. Uh, in the studio and uh, taking a call, my first call from a, you know, someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah my first call. So uh, for a, a studio uh, audience guest. So thank you very much. I appreciate uh, you being here. And Rita, I appreciate you being here as well. Thank you for running bodyguard for me earlier. Yeah. Well, I have, you know, I, I, you know, I have a, a, what is it, fans? I have a, like a, a something. Groupies? What was, it, what was the term? Was it groupies? Groupies, groupies yeah. yes. <laughs> groupies. <laughs> I, I thought he was already in bed. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you so very much for joining us. We'll be back here tomorrow night for a very special Friday night version. I mean, right? Henry's in town, so we're going to go ahead and hang out uh, with Henry and Rita tomorrow night. Join us back here at 8 p.m. and also at ipmnation.com slash AMB now. And let's kick that around some more. Um, Henry, you should also know that uh, Janice says, great show, guys. Thank you. And uh, Candace says, very nice seeing you, Henry. I would agree, Candace, wholeheartedly. Um, John says, take control of our own programming and brainwashing. I'm all over it. Absolutely. Let me, I'll end on uh, John's note. I've just decided now, right, I'm going to brainwash myself, right? What's wrong with that? Why, why let news do it? Why let politicians do it? Why let the, right, all the pundits, all the, the priestly class, why? Well, I'm, I'm just going to brainwash myself. But for me, I'm brainwashing that this is a pretty sweet gig, and the alternative is a dirt nap. There you go. <laughs> so, all right. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so very much for joining us here at All Natural Being. We will be back tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, Friday, rock and roll show, and we will answer the question, uh, did I really listen to George Thorogood? Oh, he was just phenomenal, right? I think it was the James Gang when I was growing up. That's how old I am. All right. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so very much for joining us here at All Natural Being. Thanks, everybody.
IPMNation.com.